Francis of Assisi was born into a rich family. With his intellect and charisma, he surely could have achieved a prominent and well-paid position within the Catholic Church. Instead, he died a poor and relatively young man of 45, although he was made a saint only two years after his death. And I'm sure he had no regrets. Francis's ideology was representative of a growing trend of critics of the Catholic Church, which said the Church was too rich and didn't help poor people enough. After all, Francis would say, Jesus taught his followers to be completely detached from possessions and even from their own family so that they could be completely dedicated to the Christian cause. Francis was insistent that we needed to imitate Christ's life in order to live the best. And considering that the Catholic Church was the largest landowner in Western Europe, it's a fair question to ask whether the Church was truly Christian. Well, the Pope at the time, Innocent III, was a smart man, and even though the Franciscan project was critical of the Church, the Pope sanctioned the idea in the year 2010. He allowed Francis to gather like-minded brothers to travel and preach all over the countryside to the poor and the weak, the sick and the lepers, and those who beg by the wayside. These men, and also later a second order of women was created, but these traveling preachers were not allowed to carry anything with them except for the clothes on their back. And they were expected to be happy as long as they had food and somewhere to sleep. We now call this the Franciscan Order. They are also known as Grey Friars. It seems the Franciscans were much liked and their numbers increased dramatically within Francis's lifetime. His presence and ideas did much to spread a positive image of the Catholic Church as one who cared about the poor and the sick. And the Franciscan preaching to the rural community could bring the word of Jesus to those who could not read. The idea of recreating the nativity scene from Jesus' birth, for example, it is a very visual way to teach regular people. And this Franciscan idea is now a major part of many Christians' celebrations around the time of Christmas. He is also the first documented person to receive the stigmata, or the wounds of Christ. The story is, as he was fasting for 40 days, uh, his brother and fellow traveler, Leo, saw Francis bleeding from the wrists, the feet, and the side in the same manner as Jesus when he was crucified on the cross. This is a dramatic example of the Franciscan commitment to imitate the life of Christ. Although it started simple, the Franciscan order soon became large and really well funded. In fact, Franciscan scholars such as Roger Bacon, William of Ockham, and Francois Rabelais made significant contributions to medieval art and science. And then, in the New World, Franciscan missionaries made lasting 
political contributions when they helped to set up Spanish missionaries in places like San Diego, Santa Barbara, and, oh yeah, uh, San Francisco. And this was all done by forcing the native population to build these structures. Well, it's hard for an ideology to remain consistent when it becomes so big and connected to empire. But still, in theory, the Franciscan project is intended to help those who are poor and unable to help themselves. And under imperial times, non-Christians were expected to fit this description. So, when you read that something is Franciscan, it means an ideology that is intended to teach and care for struggling peoples in the same manner that Jesus did.